Hello everyone, today's review is about the ICOM IC7300. This radio is very, very popular among HF operators. And today's video, I'm going to show you why. This radio costs around a thousand USD, about the same price that you would pay for an IN radio from the early 90s or even the 2000 years, okay? But this radio has SDR technology. It performs way better than those old rig and costs about the same price. It is jam pack a feature. You will see that in the demonstration. It's jam pack a feature and it performs very well. I can see myself owning only this radio and I can get along fine. There's nothing this radio can't do, okay? And for the price, you get 100 watt rigs. A compact size, yes, but you have a color display with a spectrum scope and waterfall. You even have a audio scope. You have 100 watts. It covers from 6 to 160 meter, all mode. And you have a USB port in the back so you can connect to a computer, do digital mode and everything. And this radio is completely standalone. So it's an SDR, but completely standalone. You don't need a computer to operate this radio. And that's why this radio is so popular. So let's go through all the features and we'll be back after for a final. Let's go through the radio very quickly. Here you have the power button, very simple. You have the transmit button, it's a PTT button if you'd like. You have the tuner button here. There's a notion very important with this radio. There is a notion of a long and a short push. If you do a short push on the tuner, it activates the integrated antenna tuner. If you do another short push, it disactivates it. But if you do a long push, it will tune, okay? Here you have the Vox that you can activate. You also have there you go. Ah, okay, you will see better. Here you have the box and you have the break-in and semi-break-in for the CW. Just like this, okay? Let's go back to SSB. Here you have the phone jack, you have the mic plug, which is standard ICOM 8-pin microphone. Here you have the twin BBT, which is the, is a, the equivalent of an IF shift, so you can adjust both sides, okay? Like this. Okay. You can also clear what you set up by doing a long push here. Here you have the preamp button that you have two different preamp. And if you do a long push, it's an attenuator. Here you have the notch. You can activate ma automatic manual notch. Or if you do a long push, you will be able in manual notch with the multi button here to adjust manually the notch. Very useful to notch a uh, very bugging signal. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> and then you have the noise blanker. If you do a long push, you can adjust many parameters for the noise blanker. Okay, you can activate, disactivate with the short push. Same thing with the noise reductor, and you can still do a long push and do some more adjustment. Here you have the squelch. You can see the arrow into the S meter showing you where the squelch position is. If you go on the other side, okay, on one side it's the squelch, on the other side it's the RF gain. Okay, so that is very useful if you have strong signal and want to reduce the background noise. I really, really like this feature. This type of RS gain on the SDR is very, very useful. Here you have an SD card slot which you can save your config, reload your config, update your firmware and uh, screen capture, record voice and keyer. This uh, SD card slot is very useful as well. Here you have okay the touchscreen. There's not many buttons into the, onto this radio, but there's not a lot of sub menu as well. It's very simple to operate because it's intuitive. If you click on the mode, you can change mode just like this. Okay, so this is pretty simple. Here you have the filter. You have three filter, and if you do a long push, you can manually adjust the filter. What I did to have 3.6 kilohertz wide, I did bandwidth there, 
and I with the VFO I extend to 3.6k. Then I'm from minus 300 to 3300. So what you can do is use the twin PBT to bring it back to zero. So you will have zero to 3.6 kilohertz wide. Okay, that is pretty cool. You do a long push again. Whoops, I didn't want to change the filter. There you go. Okay, and then you're back to the normal screen. Here you have the band switch. Okay, it's pretty easy and then you can enter manually a frequency as well. Here you have an arrow on the four air. This is your tuning at one kilohertz, but if you remove it, just clicking on it, then you will have a fine tune, but I prefer to have it like this, okay? Here you have the S meter. If you click on the S meter, there's, so if you transmit, you will be in SWR, then ALC, compressor, voltage, current, power and back to SWR. So that's pretty simple to switch the meter uh, with this radio. Here you have the spectrum scope. If you click on it, you will load and you can zoom, but you can also expand the scope to see it like this. So you have two menu for the scope. So the first menu, you have the span. So it's vary from five kilohertz to one megahertz and then back to, uh, let's say 25, okay, 50 because it's minus 25 to plus 25. Then you have the O button, okay? You have the center or fix. If you do fix, then the waterfall and spectrum will stay at the right position and then you can move the cursor like this. This is easier to fine tune, okay? But you need to set the edge, it's wider, okay? It's not the span anymore. And then you have the center like I have here, okay? So that depends what you wanna do. If you go here, you can adjust the reference level. Okay, hold on. If you have the speed that you can change the marker and expand again, okay? If you do a long push on the extend, you can customize your waterfall and spectrum scope, okay, even the color. But the only modification I did is set it to carrier point because if you go, by default, it's filter center. So if you want to tune to this signal, let's say, the line is in the middle but it's much easier, okay? So if I want to go here, I, I need to go in the middle. If I go here and I go in carrier point, okay? It's, you see, I'm in USB, so it's at the bottom and LSB I will be on top. I find it easier to tune, okay? So I prefer like this. Let's go now, okay, for the menu, we'll be back. We'll go that at the end. Here you have the function button with the main function. You have the IP plus like the 7610. This is can be useful in certain condition. And then you have a different function that we, most of them have been covered before, but you can activate or deactivate the function just using the touch screen like this, using the function button. Every time you're in a menu and you want to exit, you click exit, okay, so that's, the exit button for that. So it comes back to the default screen. Here you can activate or deactivate the waterfall. Okay, if you do a long push, it will uh, give you this screen. Then you have the quick, you can change quick menu, the, the, the meters uh, type, but this you can do it by just touch screen on the S meter like I showed before. Okay, and you have the uh, Exit button again. Okay, hold on, real quick, and you can record start from there. Hold on. Okay, here you have the multi button. If you do a push on it, you can adjust the RF. It's very intuitive. Huh? Look how it is. So it's all the same. And when it's activated, you can see the blue here. So if, if I turn it off, turn off. Okay, that's pretty easy. You press here, and it's gone again. And you can do exit uh, at the same time. We'll come back to the XFC after. Here you have the TXRX. If you do the squelch here, you can see it. And when you transmit, it's red. Here you have the auto tune. It will tune automatically to the correct frequency for a CW, let's say. Here you have the speed function and the lock. So if you do a long push, it's a lock. Okay. If you do a long push again, it will unlock. Okay. If you do a speech, you need to have the volume up. F1. 14.227 megahertz USB. And here you have 
the RIT that you can activate and change it like this and you can clear it like this. You have the TX RIT if you like, okay, they can, you can activate as well. You can activate the split. With the split, what it does, this button here, you can monitor the transmit frequency and it's between VFO A and B, okay? So it's simple as that. Then let's remove the split. Here you have the VFO or memory mode, okay? And if you are in memory, then you can switch memory just by using the arrow, okay? So you can also do a quick memory, a memory pad, okay? That you do a long push and then you switch and then you can recall that frequency very easily, okay? Then you have some previous recall that I did. So that's very useful. You also have the scope here. It's the same thing, okay, as the button at the bottom. You have the audio scope that is very neat, okay? You can adjust the level and everything. So that is very nice, very cool, okay? You can also expand, <laughs> but you can have both at the same time, which is great. And then you have the voice recall that you can have here. But you, if you are in CW, okay, you will have the key here. And the key here, no, okay, the key here recall as well. So let's go back to SSB. Let's exit and let's go back here. So you have the meter. The meter, I really, really like this because you can see everything at the same time, okay? If we turn off the scope and have the meter, so you have all the meter at the same time. This is very useful if you want to do some tests. Then you have the SWR, the SWR, let's go, hold on a second, let's go to an area where there's no signal, okay? And let's go to SWR. This will give you the SWR curve. So you press play here. Okay, so this gave it you uh, uh, some sort of a, a graphic of your SWR at 10 Ks apart, okay? So this is a, a cool function that I don't have on the 7610, so <laughs> it's nice. Then you have the memory here, you have the scan, you have the empath, you know, the quick recall frequency that I program, you can see it here. You have the record file and you have the set. In the set, this is the main menu, then you go there and what you can do is set up, let's say, the tone for transmit or receive for every mode. So you have the bandwidth and then you have the uh, bass and treble uh, as well that you can adjust. What's good with ICOM rig is it all the same. So if you use the same mic, you do the same config. You configure one that with someone that, and then tell you the audio is fine, and then you do you do the same on all the radio, and it will sound the same. Go to function, then you have a few functions that you can set here. Okay, hold on. Here you have the connector the connector, then you can configure even though the accessories or the USB port uh, to do different things. So this radio has a USB port in the back that can connect to a computer. It will detect a sound card so you can record or send audio, but you can also control the radio through that port. So to do remote, you only need to connect that and it will work. It worked great, okay? But you need to do some setup here, okay? That's here you're gonna set up what's gonna key, where it's gonna come, the audio for the data and everything. So if you wanna do data mode, you need to configure the connectors. Here you have the display setting that you can have, okay? And uh, you also have the time set, can set the date and time manually. There's no uh, Ethernet port, so you cannot synchronize with an NTP. Then you have a SD card. You, have, you need to load. You can load. You can save config. And then you have, um, you can format. You can do firmware upgrade from there as well. Here you have the others. Information about the radio version. Okay. And uh, you also have a screen calibration, reset, all reset or partial. And you have the emergency setup. Okay. For a uh, lower the power if you have the SWR. So this cover pretty much this radio, but don't forget the large VFO with the button inside that turns, which is great for a radio like this, for a small size, you have everything in this radio to do whatever you want to do on HF. Uh, but it's a Q5, Q5 signal with QSP, over. Roger, Mazzy, I'm France, I think you're very much. Uh, you think you are 5 by 9 plus. 
Nice segment today and uh, well, what can I say? The weather is limited. Alors, j'ai pas envie de forcer parce que dans la région le vent est fort et uh... This concludes this video. I hope you did enjoy as usual. If you're not already a subscriber, please subscribe. This your support is very much appreciated. I want to reach 10,000 subscriber by the end of this year. So please pass the word and please subscribe and support this channel. Your support is very much appreciated. Also, if you are a subscriber or if you just subscribe, don't forget to click on that notification bell to be notified as soon as a video is online. So you will get notified when a new video is posted. I don't post very often, but I try to post quality video. Anyway, I do my best, okay? <laughs> On that, the ICOM 7300 is a great radio, great radio to own if you, need, you want to invest. Into an HF radio, I think this one is a good buy. There is a promotion right now, so you can get this radio for less, and it's really, really worth the price. It does the job, and you can't go wrong by selecting the Icon IC7300. On that, I'll say 73 and catch you some other time.